trouble often starts about now. But handing out chocolate seems to be putting a smile on many faces. It's something that everyone's attracted to, yeah? It makes you smile, it makes you feel happy, it makes you want to dance. What? It makes me happy. Brilliant. So why does chocolate have this effect? First, it's loaded with sugar, which gives the brain a rush of energy. Just what you need if you're tired and irritable at the end of a long night. Chocolate also contains a natural ingredient which may cause the brain to release feel-good chemicals called endorphins. Add a delicious taste and you've got a potent mood lifter. But can chocolate actually cut crime? The initial results have been dramatic. Between the core hours of 1.30 a.m. and 3.30 a.m. in the morning, there was a 60% reduction in the amount of uh, violence that was occurring. So we, we would say that's a huge success. But using chocolate to combat street violence is just the tip of the iceberg in the brave new world of mood foods. Some experts believe all food rich in carbohydrates, like cake, rice, and pasta, can make us feel relaxed and happy. But foods rich in protein, like fish and meat, have a different effect. They make us feel alert and focused. This distinction could have profound consequences. Imagine you're heading for a showdown split-second decisions have dramatic results. Eating the right meal beforehand could make all the difference. These two men have agreed to test this theory. Because in their ruthless line of work, having a sharper brain than your opponent could give you a killing edge. Paul Littlewood and Terry Chapman are former British chess champions. They've agreed to test the effect of two contrasting meals at a top London restaurant. Prosciutto and artichokes for Paul. But it's tagliatelle with an asparagus fonduta for Terry. Paul's meal is designed to boost his mental alertness. It's loaded with protein in the form of red meat. This should sharpen up his brain. But Terry eats a heavy meal packed with carbohydrates. It should make him feel happy, but also so relaxed he becomes drowsy. It's not long before the contrasting mood food effects seem to be kicking in. I don't feel over full. I'm raring to go and raring to play Terry this afternoon. Just right now, I feel like stretching out in the sun and having a nice snooze, frankly. But there's no chance of that, because now it's time to test the effects of the two different meals. Paul and Terry play a tense match in which they each have just half an hour to make their moves. It's soon clear that Terry, who overdosed on carbohydrates, is struggling against the clock. He's taking far too long to make his decisions. With seconds to spare, he manages to force a draw. Terry ate a meal designed to make him feel drowsy, and he almost ran out of time. But could this be a coincidence? To find out, we need to wait a day and then repeat the experiment. If food can create temporary mood changes in people like Paul and Terry, could it also affect someone for life? 